one of the greatest queens England ever had was Elizabeth I. Throughout her reign, it was a golden age, in which there was a huge boom in culture and literature, with writers such as Shakespeare performing plays in front of people in London. But Elizabeth, during her reign, would see off the threat of the Spanish Armada, and she would state that she was married to her country, and she would also make many tough decisions. She executed her cousin, Mary, Queen of Scots, but remained unmarried and had no children, and in her final years, there was a worry as to who would take the throne after her. She had ordered the execution of Mary, Queen of Scots, and with this, many believed she had executed her own successor, but her death was one which was a long departure from the powerful Tudor monarch and figure. Join us today to look at the horrific death of Queen Elizabeth I, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe to The Fortress. Throughout the Tudor period, there was not a great amount of medical knowledge and treatments were poor. Society relied on apothecaries who would make potions out of a variety of different items, but doctors also performed treatments such as bleeding and purging. There were many people who blamed illness and disease on God and the supernatural, but during the reign of Elizabeth I, the Queen was ill seriously a number of times throughout her life. She suffered a particularly nasty outbreak of smallpox that left her scarred on her face, and she would carry these scars for the rest of her life. Because of the scars, Elizabeth I was worried about her beauty and her image, and she would order painters to make her portraits more flattering, and they did not show a complete lifelike image of her. As time went on, her image changed, and she remained youthful in her portraits, and these were purposely painted to make her look younger, but members of her court knew the reality of the Queen's health and beauty. One ambassador said, who saw her, Her teeth are very yellow and unequal, many of them are missing so one cannot understand her easily when she speaks quickly. For almost 45 years, Elizabeth I reigned over England, and her subjects loved her very much. But in her final years, her health got considerably worse, and she also became incredibly depressed, due to the fact her close friends and allies, many of whom had been with her decades and since she was a child, died and succumbed to illness themselves. In 1590, one of her closest, Blanche Parry, died, who was a chief gentlewoman of the Queen's Privy Chamber, and she was also made the keeper of the Queen's jewels. Blanche had known Elizabeth since she was a child, and she was one of her most loyal attendants. She was seen as a baroness, and she was given a lot of land for her service to the Queen. But then in 1598, one of the Queen's greatest and most influential advisers, Sir William Cecil, died. Cecil had been by the Queen's side throughout her whole reign, and he was there during the tough times, and he was a strong supporter of her. This left a hole in Elizabeth's life and her government, and she was devastated, and after this she became more reclusive and introverted. But in her final years she remained a powerful woman, and she had acted decisively when she ordered the execution of her former favourite, Robert Devereux, the Earl of Essex, who had been involved in a rebellion against the Queen. At one point many believed that Devereux would have married the Queen, despite a huge age gap, and Devereux was convicted of treason, and he was then dragged to Tower Hill, where he was executed by axe in front of a large crowd, and Elizabeth had signed his death warrant. In January 1603, though, Elizabeth I became unwell, and she was in a very dark mood, and she would then retire to Richmond Palace, as this was one of her favourite houses. Richmond was chosen for Elizabeth to retire to, as she was very comfortable there, and in her final month she was surrounded by her most loyal attendants. Elizabeth began to go off her food and drink, and she lost a lot of weight, and this led many to become increasingly worried about her, and her ladies asked for doctors to come and see her, but Elizabeth I knew what was coming, and she refused to allow doctors to see her. One of her close friends, Catherine Howard, died, and this made Elizabeth even more depressed, as Howard had served her for 45 years, and she died very suddenly. This could have been a big factor that led to Elizabeth going downhill, as it was said that the Queen loved the Countess well, and half lamented her death, remaining ever since in a deep melancholy, that she must seem to be overtaken. But by February 1603, things were now very serious, and Elizabeth's depression was to the point where she would refuse to move and get out of bed at times. This was a long departure from the days in which she would inspire sailors at Tilbury Dock, to defeat the most serious threat in the Spanish Armada. 
Elizabeth was said to have been a vision of the goddess Athena when she issued a war cry to defend England. But this was not the Queen now, and Elizabeth was almost 70, and she was also very frail. But she continued to be stubborn, and did not eat much during mealtimes. The Queen's ladies were now very concerned about her being very weak too, and they placed pillows all over the floor of her bedchambers, as if she fell these may cushion the blow. But further close deaths to the Queen of her friends Catherine Carey, the Countess of Nottingham and Lady Nollies, hurt Elizabeth. In the final days of the Queen's life she became rather depressed, and in March 1603 she got sicker and remained in a settled and unremovable melancholy, meaning she could not shake off her poor moods. She would for some time sit on cushions for hours and would not move, seemingly in deep thought. She was contemplating her mistakes and her brutality throughout her reign, including contemplating the regret that she held for ordering the execution of her cousin Mary Queen of Scots. It's believed that Mary would have succeeded Elizabeth, but she ordered her execution due to her involvement in treasonous plots against the English Queen. But the Queen regretted her decision to execute Mary, and it was said that she was led into this by her privy councillors, who wanted Mary dead once and for all. It was said that the Queen sheds many tears and sighs, maintaining her innocence, that she never gave consent to the death of that Queen. It's even said that she may have been visited in her dreams by ghostly figures of those who had been executed under her watch, and by her close friends who had died. But to everyone who was close with her, it was clear that Elizabeth was dying. Her depressive state of mind and delirium added to things, but the Queen's body was also failing. In March 1603 she made the decision to once and for all retire to her bed, and the Archbishop of Canterbury was then summoned to come to her bedside and to pray for her. He insisted to Elizabeth that she would be looked after, and that she would go to heaven, and would be a queen there also. But on the 24th of March 1603, Elizabeth I died at Richmond Palace. She had been ill for many months, and her body was then transported to Whitehall Palace, where it was to be held in state before her funeral took place. Elizabeth insisted that she did not want to be disemboweled after her death, but this was not listened to, and Robert Cecil left it to the doctors to disembowel her, and the Queen was then embalmed, and her body was encased in a lead-lined coffin. Each night six of her ladies watched over her coffin, and at some point there was a loud crack heard from it, as her gases exploded, and the explosion of her body was said to have been so significant that it splintered some of the wood on the coffin and this would have been much worse if she had not been disemboweled after her death. But Elizabeth I's funeral took place on the 28th of April 1603, and she was then interred in a tomb in Westminster Abbey. To begin with, she was held inside the same vault as her grandfather Henry VII, but then she would, during the reign of James I, be placed in her own elaborate tomb. But thousands of people witnessed the procession of the Queen's body on its final journey, it was said there was such a general sighing, groaning and weeping as the like had never been seen or known in the history of man. The people of England loved their queen, and she was a woman who had tried to restore England to being a great nation, and she would during her time manage to see off her biggest threat across Europe. She was a woman who would become depressed with the loss of her closest friends and allies, but in her final days she thought about the decisions she had made, and many of these haunted her final moments. But Elizabeth I, without a doubt, is one of the greatest queens in history. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.